Hey guys, it is the start of snowmobile season again this year and uh, we got another machine to work on. In last week's video, we did the slides on my 2019 super wide expedition. This time we're doing a 2023 super wide expedition. This has one season on it. It's got 3,500 kilometers and the slides are completely worn out versus my slides that had 8,600 kilometers and I probably could have got this season out of them. Follow along while we get this thing fixed up. We're not gonna repeat what we did last time. We're gonna try doing things a little bit differently and uh, emphasize the differences in the two uh, slide jobs. Thanks for stopping by. This time around, we're gonna do things a little bit differently than we did on my sled. Uh, given that this is only a year old sled, we don't really need to take the slide cage out of it and do the full, you know, check all the bearings, etc., in as much detail as we did uh, with my five-year-old machine. So uh, we're going to try a little different technique for pulling the slides off. We're going to slip them out, turn them 90 degrees, and pull them out the track window here. We've slackened the track off quite a bit, almost to the point where we could pull the slide cage out of there. But uh, that's partly due to uh, changing the slide. It'll make it easier to get at. And also because we're gonna be changing these front wheels. These are they're 141 from the factory and we're gonna, we're gonna be putting a 147 on there. And you wouldn't think that a couple of millimeters would make a big difference, but uh, that will just take a little bit more of the load off of the, uh, off the slides. You can see on this, uh, this track, there's a lot of threads hanging out of the edge. We'll get to those before we call this job done. That'll be uh, towards the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. Um, the reason we're having to do this is because this is the Silent Cobra track, which BRP in their infinite wisdom has put slots in here. I don't know how well that's showing up in the, uh, in the camera, but you can see there's slots in here. And this track does not hold much snow in it. The snow falls out through these uh, through these slots. But I guess the reasoning for doing it is that it, it's a quieter track and there's absolutely no question that my 24 inch wide machine is, has lots of track noise. I can't hear the engine running when I'm going down the trail over the track noise. Not that it, I don't find it objectionable or anything. It's just, it's track noise that you hear on that machine, not uh, engine noise. And uh, also, I don't know how well this will show up in here. You can see there's kind of a chunk missing out of the track. This machine has not been abused. This primarily, it's uh, trail riding on a, on a reasonably decent groom trail with snow across the lake. It hasn't done anything that a utility sled shouldn't do. And to have the slides completely worn out like these are um, in one season is pretty crazy. Just like the, uh, the slide cage on my machine, We've got a bolt here that comes up through the slide, has a captive nut in behind, just kind of captivated, captive in a slot inside of the rail. What we need to do in this case though, is we're gonna get that out through the bottom. You see how the nut pops out of there? It just lives in a slot, not a big deal. And uh, We'll get that bolt to go down through, but that's going to take two hands. So I will uh, bring you guys back when we're ready to start sliding these uh, slides towards the rear. Put the nut and the bolt together and we'll set those aside. And now we got to get some slides off. This step wasn't too bad on my machine when we had the slide right up on the table. We just kind of tapped it off. And uh, the way they describe it in the instructions is we're supposed to take a punch and tap on that screw hole get this started to bat towards the back. Then we uh, grab onto the old slide with a pair of ice grips and pull it out through the track window. Never tried this before. We'll give it a shot, see what we can do. Morocco dead blow hammer and a nice long punch. We'll see if we can tap those slides back. The advantage to the utility sled is with the uh, transmission in neutral, it's not too hard to move the track back and forth by hand. You 
you can really see this end of the track, like this, this uh, slide is completely worn out to the point where I'm deforming the plastic into the groove by uh, poking it with my finger. We'll get it off, take a good look at it, but this is pretty amazing wear. You can see I'm pushing that with my finger. That's how badly worn those slides are after only uh, 3,500 kilometers. Up here at the front, we're not into the wear bar yet, but definitely it's at the wear bar. Those are worn out there too. If uh, the owner of this machine hadn't been paying attention to the, uh, the condition of his slides and he tried, you know, assumed, oh, it's a one-year-old machine, I shouldn't have to worry about slides yet. Uh, definitely we'd have been changing rails. Yeah. And if you look at the condition of the slides, nowhere there, wore out here. It gets a little bit better along the slide. Where oh. the wheels are in the middle of the chassis, there's yeah. basically nowhere. Yeah, almost nowhere. And then when you get to the front of the slides, there, and then this is what they should look like, factory new. So let's compare it to a new one and we'll compare it to your 8,000 kilometer slide from your expedition. Here we've got the, uh, the new slide that we're putting on compared to the one that came off. And uh, I noticed that the, the back of this has a little bit of a taper to it that isn't, uh, isn't on the original slide. Definitely you can see the difference in thickness compared this to this. When we come up here and likewise, you can see this is up at the front and here's what it should look like. That's uh, pretty bad wear for one season and 3,500 kilometers. This is the slide off of my machine. Uh, basically it's the same size machine. They're both super wide expeditions. Mine is a uh, 2019, so it's the XU chassis as opposed to the Gen 4. But this has 8,600 kilometers on it. And uh, quite honestly, the, uh, the owner of the machine that we're working on today and myself uh, ride together most of the time. So to see the kind of wear that he got on his, uh, on his new uh, machine compared to what I got out of uh, my five-year-old machine, that's a, a huge difference. Like we did on my machine, we'll take and just put a little bit of uh, grease in the, uh, in the track here. And uh, in the instructions for doing this on the BRP site, they talk about just using like a silicone spray. And that's a good idea if all you're worried about is this installation. The big reason for doing the grease like this is for the next inst or the next removal. Having the grease in here, the grease is, is going to stay in place. Whereas if you just put a like a silicone lube or with this uh, three in one spray, whatever you want to call it, um, the uh, if you use that, it's not going to be there the next time you go to pull these off. And uh, if you plan on owning one of these machines for any length of time and you plan on uh, maintaining it yourself, give yourself a hand. Set yourself up for success next time. Now we need to get this jammed back in. The tricky part is going to be that the track windows are long this way and we need them to be long this way. So we're going to have to try and feed this through and then turn it 90 degrees. Make sure that we've got the uh, screw hole at the front so that we can attach it to the rail. And also we've compared the length to basically the same length as the, uh, as the ones we took off. So that is uh, one of the tech tips they give you in the instructions because 
uh, especially when you're dealing with short track machines, not so much these long 154 inch machines, but uh, in the shorter track ones, they're not necessarily cut to length. You may have to trim them. And uh, they just use a, like a metal cutting hacksaw will cut the, uh, the plastic slide quite nice. Now, the other trick here is we don't really want to crush the slide with a pair of vice grips. The uh, pulling the old ones out, of course, we didn't care what kind of shape they were in when we were done. But uh, this one we want to maintain like new if we can. We got it started on the rail and the uh, slide actually does kind of fit in that slot. Going on smooth. This is where uh, about a 12 inch long piece of hockey stick would be really handy. In the instructions they say to use uh, uh, a long punch for that, but uh, with the extra articulation at the back for reversing, it's, uh, your hockey stick idea is ideal, I think. Yeah. Why didn't we think of that sooner? Yeah, well, you've got about three-eighths of an inch left to go. You might want to check the hole because I think that it might be close and you might be able to get it aligned with that punch. I think we've still got a little bit more. Right about there. So now I'll try putting the punch up through the front. No, we still got a ways to go. Uh, felt like it went. Eh, not quite. I think the slide is going to have to dead end against this front nylon cap. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there's about a little better than an eighth of an inch. Maybe three sixteenths of an inch. You're there. We're there. Move the foam pad so I can lay down. We'll stick the punch up in and wiggle things back and forth. That, that feels pretty good. Now we'll put the, uh, the bolt back in. I would say the actual physical changing of the, uh, the slide is easier when you've got the skid out but the effort of wrestling with that skid in and out definitely uh, makes this the easier way to do it. We need to rinse and repeat on the other side. You guys don't need to watch that. And uh, we'll bring you back when we've got the other side bolted back together and we're ready to move on to the next step. This is the new 147 mil wheel that we're gonna be putting on here. You can see part number and 147 mil. This is the factory wheel, the 141 says right here. And you can see, if we line those up, I don't know how well that shows up on the camera, but there is definitely a difference in size. Hopefully that'll hold the, uh, the track away from the slide just a little bit. And um, it's much easier to replace these wheels if uh, necessary than it is to change the slides. Although the slide change did go very well. The, uh, the 147 millimeter wheel is what's used on the XU chassis. That's what I have on my red machine that we were working on last week. We're gonna put it on the Gen 4 and see how it goes. Uh, the owner of this machine got the idea. Uh, he's been on a number of forums, Facebook groups, that sort of thing, uh, looking at the, uh, the wear issue on these slides. Uh, he's not the only one that's had this uh, problem. Matter of fact, uh, right behind the cameraman is another Gen 4 that's gonna need slides on it again uh, this fall. Uh, it had slides put on it last year. It's a two-year-old sled and probably end up, we'll see how these uh, wheels do on this one and that Gen 4 will probably get it as well. In investigating this on the forums, uh, guys are having to change out slides in 800 kilometers. That's pretty low. Even, uh, you know, 
in poor snow conditions, you should be able to get 800 kilometers out of a set of slides, unless you're running down a gravel road or something like that. Uh, upwards to 6,000, which still isn't as good as what I got on mine with the, uh, the 8,600 kilometers, but it's getting up in that direction. Hopefully this will solve the problem, or at least help it substantially. We've got the 141 mil wheel on this side still. We peel the dust cap off, or snow cap, or whatever you want to call it. We've got our impact. It's a 10 mil socket, so I think it's probably a M5 or M6 bolt that we're pulling out of there. There's a nut on the back side and the bolt on this side. The bolt comes out, the nut comes out. The wheel comes off. We put the nut back on. Check with the wrench, we're good and snug. Put the cap back on. And that's all there is to it. Now we've got the larger wheels on there. One other suggestion that uh, we've seen on the forums talks about potentially adding a second or an additional set of wheels. And you can see there's some holes here and there is a kit that uh, is available for some models. I believe it's the Summit. But the Summit doesn't have as much stuff in the, uh, in the middle of the suspension as the Expedition. So there's actually not enough room to utilize these holes. I believe it's the front set of holes we're supposed to utilize and there's just too much stuff in behind. There's not enough room for a set of wheels there. So hopefully the uh, larger wheels up here at the front will do the job. Now that we've got the, uh, the slides in and the wheels changed, we've got our tech tip that we promised for getting rid of these threads. Propane torch. Now the reason you want to do this is not for aesthetics. It's because those little threads will collect snow and ice and then end up ripping out of the track, causing more track damage. Of course, it's going to take two hands to uh, move the track around. That's got this side cleaned up. We'll rinse and repeat on the other side and bring you back when it's time to start tensioning up the track. As you can see, six inches is way too much slack to have here on the track. We've got our uh, 20 pound barbell weights laying in the belly of the track, basically at the low point. And now we need to snug up these adjuster bolts, run these big wheels back so that we get uh, an inch and a half between the track and the slide. On smaller track machines, the, um, the tension on the, uh, the back wheels uh, plays a bigger part in the tracking of the track, but with these big machines, the track is basically filling the tunnel anyways, and uh, it doesn't seem to make that much difference if you're off a little bit. But uh, what we can do is measure this side, measure the other side, run the track a little bit, repeat, and uh, that should get us to the point where we're lined up and uh, equal tension on both sides. I don't know if you guys can see that around my arm or not, but as I'm tightening that, the track is coming up to the slide rail. It would be nice to be able to put like an impact in here, but uh, not really enough room. I suppose I could use my M12 ratchet if I had it with me. That is pretty close to the uh, width of a two by four. I'm gonna go around the other side and bring it up close, then I'll grab a tape measure and we'll double check. 
but uh, I'll bring you guys back once I get the other side snugged up a bit. We are really close to an inch and a half on either side with these weights in the belly. Uh, one thing we do need to do, these bolts on the back axle for the back wheel are loose. We need to hit those with the impact just to uh, snug them up a little bit. I don't know that we want to do a final tightening on them just yet. I want to hit them so that they're not flopping around in the breeze because uh, the next step is to fire things up here, get the weights out of the track. Absolutely do not forget these in when you're trying to run the machine. Uh, we'll get those out of there, run the machine, let things kind of settle in where they are, check the tracking, make sure that we're centered in the tunnel, make sure that the slides are centered on the track clips, give it a, a look over, put the weights back in and double check and make sure that our track tension didn't change. Uh, likewise, when we take it out for the first run and give it a, a good you know, break in, it's a good idea to lift the back end up like this and put the weights back in just to double check after you've uh, had everything slacked off. Probably a good idea every year to check your track tension anyways, but especially when you've had things loosened up to do uh, slides, etc. Saw that wheel oh, sucked in. Those wheels aren't final tightness yet. I just, I've got them snugged up so that we can run things. Absolutely. Take the weights out. I'll fire this up. Low gear is good enough. Shut it off so that nobody can come along and hit the throttle and uh, also so I don't gas myself. That is exactly an inch and a half. Let me check the other side. It's at an inch and a half too. Let's uh, snug up these back idling wheels. Got everything all snugged up. We got our dust caps or snow caps or whatever you want to call them. Bearing covers. Hey, that sounds like a good term. Got that one in. Got to do the other side. Get this other weight out of here. Well, guys, that's uh, what we had planned for today. This is bad for the amount of kilometers on this sled to have slides that are in that kind of shape is uh, not impressive. But hopefully these wheels that we put on will help. If you got this far in the video, can you do me a favor? Give me one of those thumb up things. Give me a like. And uh, notice we got merch from uh, Spread Shop, Doug's Messy Garage, links below the video. And uh, if you haven't already done so, why don't you consider subscribing, ringing that bell icon. Always helps out the channel. Thanks a lot for stopping by. We'll catch you in the next mass.